In both cases, President Clinton denies there was any inappropriate behavior on his part. But since Lewinsky has not told her story publicly, and Willie has, Willie now is the target of a spirited counteroffensive. The president tried to stay above the fray today, but as NBC's Claire Shipman tells us from the White House now, his operatives were hard at work. Claire? Tom, cautious White House officials say they are not attacking Kathleen Willie, despite the fact that they're taking her story apart piece by piece. White House officials now say that Kathleen Willie, shown here in 1992 with candidate Bill Clinton, had a clear motive for making up her story. She wanted to make money from a book. And today, Michael Wiener, the head of New Millennium Press, which published an account of the O.J. Simpson case, confirms that Willie and her lawyer approached him recently looking for about $300,000 for her story. But he says he wasn't interested, saying the story of one unwelcome sexual advance would not sell well. The story that's on the front page is the book, and there's very, very little else. I, I think that she's had an interesting life, a sad life. As part of the White House strategy today, the president avoided comment on the matter, although he was in public on Capitol Hill for a health care event and a St. Patrick's Day luncheon. His advisors hope that Willie's efforts to sell a book and the many letters she wrote the president will convince the public to believe that Bill Clinton did not make an unwelcome sexual advance. But some question why the White House was so quick to hand out the letters from Willie, but has refused to turn over any documents relating to Monica Lewinsky. Well, it's a much more dramatic moment when someone goes on national television like that, and naturally we wanted to help Americans understand the fuller context of the story. And NBC News has learned tonight that the White House thought the letters from Willie were a critical defense even in January, when the president's lawyer, Bob Bennett, used them in his cross-examination of Willie in the Paula Jones deposition. And as has been the case for the last few months, the public, through the polls, has more good news for the White House. Early surveys done since the Willie interview show that two-thirds of Americans think the president is doing a good job, despite widespread doubt that he's telling the truth. And officials here say their own internal polls show the same thing. So far, so good, said one advisor tonight. Tom? Thanks very much, Claire Shipman, tonight at the White House. Still ahead tonight, NBC News In-Depth. A closer look at all the president's denials and these scandals. There are a lot of things where he'll kind of look at you and he'll kind of say something, and when you're finished, you're trying to figure out what did he say. Why are there so many times when President Clinton's story has changed so radically? It's the way he and the White House have responded to them. On a growing number of occasions, his initial version of events has been revised. NBC's Pete Williams tonight, in depth. The lingering doubts about whether President Clinton is telling the whole truth and nothing but are the same questions that have dogged him, his critics say, because of a pattern of denial and revision. 1992, Mr. Clinton denies a tabloid story that he had a 12-year affair with an Arkansas state employee, Jennifer Flowers. Oh, I read the story. The story's not accurate. The story is just not true. Six years later, revision. Mr. Clinton says in his deposition for the Paula Jones case that, yes, they did have, quote, sexual relations once in 1977. More recently, last August, the president's lawyer says Mr. Clinton has no specific recollection of meeting Kathleen Willey in the Oval Office. Now the revision. I have a very clear memory of the meeting, and I told the truth. Today, the first public comment from a woman in Congress over the sexual harassment charges from a moderate Republican who says she believes Kathleen Willey. This is an example of a woman going to a would-be employer, going to an employer and asking for a job. And to me, that has nothing to do with the president's private life. But the president's defenders say he does tell the truth. And with all the investigators on his back, he has no choice but to speak guardedly. I think any public official who speaks on the record with a pending grand jury of which he is the putative target, as well as a defendant in a civil lawsuit, needs to have his head examined. But Mr. Clinton's critics say when it comes to telling the truth, the president of the United States should be held to a higher standard. Pete Williams, NBC News, Washington. Of course, the Kathleen Woolley story has been the talk of the nation for the past two days, and it's a story that resonates with women in particular. NBC's Andrea Mitchell brought together five women for a discussion. 
and found out there are many views on just who's telling the truth here. Five women, five different backgrounds, all voted for Bill Clinton in the past. All can identify with Kathleen Willey and her story. But in the end, five women with different opinions on just who is telling the truth. Deborah Katz, 39, a sexual harassment lawyer. The scenario that Kathleen Willey has set out on the 60 Minutes interview is very consistent with allegations that I see routinely in my practice as a civil rights lawyer, and I found her extremely, extremely credible. Well, Amy Holmes, 24, a conservative economist. Kathleen Willey is an attractive, pulled-together looking sort of woman. I mean, when Paula Jones came out with her allegations, she was derided as being trailer park trash. She is 51 years old, um, so she's not necessarily given to these sort of like coy flirtations and the way someone, perhaps Paula Jones, might have been. So I think it makes a big difference. Because Barbara Nicastro, 49, former federal prosecutor. She was reluctantly uh, a part to, party to this case and to these events. Uh, unlike Paula Jones, who m stepped forward and, and, and perhaps has some motivations. But in this case of he said, she said, two of the women believe both the president and Willie could be telling the truth. Cindy Anton, 29, a third year medical student. I do believe that she thinks she's telling the truth, but I also think that there's, there is room for it to have been a misinterpretation of what went on. And I just would hate to rush in and say, that's definitely what happened. Nancy Zirkin, 51, a political activist. This is a very serious charge, and, and it bothers me a great deal that everybody's rushing into judgment. Can you see a scenario, can you imagine a scenario in which the president is telling the truth about Kathleen Willey? I can absolutely imagine that, and I can also imagine she is telling the truth. We just simply don't know. I think they're shameful in smearing the reputations of these women, all these insinuations about what their motivations might be. What about Willie's letters, all her communications with the president? These letters are a perfect example of whatever you may have done to me on that particular occasion, Bill Clinton, I still need employment, I need a paying job. These women all find the Willie case distressing, but still... I wouldn't want her to be my father, but politically I still, I, I still am in favor of his policies. A conversation that went on after the cameras stopped, as women continue to talk around the country about the man, the women, and the presidency. Andrea Mitchell, NBC News, Washington.